it's Debbie with Kip's Corner. Welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I've got a flip through for you today. Uh, this is a journal that I, th I think I, I've got a video where I was working on the cover uh, a few videos back and it's finished now and I wanted to walk through it with you. The front is, the base is a uh, an upholstery fabric. It's got these beautiful golds and greens and burgundy kind of colors. And then the lace here on the back and on the front is from a vintage handkerchief. And then I've got trim here that is from, uh, I believe that's from the Snippet Shop. Metal corners. The spine is a canvas that's been painted and kind of grunged up. And then I did, um, uh, visible stitching here on the outside and stitched directly to the spine so you can see those threads and I use a, a kind of a burgundy color. Then on the front, the closure, this is a vintage button and it's one of those buttons that kind of has a really tall, I don't know what that's called, the part where you sew it on. <laughs> and so I also added some glue to give it a little bit of stability. It is sewn and then this is a sari silk cover. It is sewn to the suede that I will show you. Oops, pop down. The suede that kind of comes around and provides some extra stability here. And then the sari silk is also sewn to the suede. So we have this piece that comes around like so. And I will come back. Uh, I have a little story to tell you about that. So I'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> okay. So let's flip through, let's get to this. The inside is also some suede and it's sort of grungy and um, messy and um, gives it a little bit of an older feel. On the inside front pocket and the inside back pocket, I've got um, in inside front cover ooh, and inside back cover. I have pockets made from the rest of that handkerchief, same handkerchief where I use the lace on the outside. And then inside this pocket, I just have a little, uh, a little baby notebook here. This was created using, um, this is a printout from Susan Taylor Brown's shop, Poppiness. And I'll link that kit below. I've used it a couple places in here. Just a little pocket here on the inside. And then just some tea stain paper, um, some, a poem page from a little book, poem book some stenciling, mostly tea dyed paper, and I think there's a doily in here somewhere. Yep, there it is, doily. And so that's just a little notebook that I've got slipped inside the front cover here. On uh, This book has three signatures, and the front page of each signature, plus a few others inside, are from um, Medieval Mirage, a kit. I will link that as well. And on this first one, I've just added a vintage, a little piece of vintage doily here on the outside and I've got it wrapped around a little bit. You'll see that. Some lace edging, a little bead bobble here. And then this is a, this is a page, a book page from a butterfly book that I've got. Tea day dyed paper. This pocket is the little, I don't know what you call that. The, the little bling down here at the bottom is a Two pieces from two different vintage doilies and a, a button. And then we've got, this is just a um, journaling card from, I think that's a printout from the Graphics Fairy. And this is from that same kit from Susan Taylor Brown. And I've just got it backed with some tea stained paper and I've got it topped with some sari silk. Tea stained paper, page from Edith Holden. And I Flipped it over just to create a pocket. Added some, this is painter's masking paper that I've just added here on the inside so that you have a, an extra journaling spot. And here's another journaling card and a little baby tag tucked in there. This is a page from my Paperscapes book from the Butterfly book. And on this page, I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me see if I can get a little closer. There we go. If you can see that, it's clear embossed on top of a um, an old encyclopedia page. And then on the back side, I've just added more of that masking paper so that you can journal there. This is from a vintage 
writing a handbook, learning to cursive handbook, another book page, more tea dyed paper, and a little ruffle here that I've added. Um, and I will do a how-to video eventually. I've learned a little trick with these that makes it a little easier. Um, sewing is not something I do well. And so ruffles are not something I do well. <laughs> but I really like the way these turned out, so I'll show you that. And then this is just a book page. Pretty, pretty flowers. Tea dyed paper. Backsides of those pages. Backside of the paperscape. And the back side of the Edith Holden page. And I've just got a couple more. Um, there's a journaling card here. And just a plain vintage. Not vintage. It's actually new. A plain card. Tucked in there. Just for fun. And another book page. Here's more medieval mirage. Or this is actually the back side of the first signature. You can see that doily here. Where it flipped around to the back side. The second signature, um, this, the outside is a Tim Holtz paper and the inside is med medieval mirage paper from that same kit. And there's a little bee, he's kind of, there we go. A little bee charm here on the edge. And all of the signature, the first pages of the signatures have lace edging. Then here, this is just a little pocket with a tag from Love Junk Journals from Tracy Fox more tea dyed paper, and this is an envelope made from book page. And um, it's actually, I believe it's two book pages put together, so it's got some stability to it. Some vintage doilies, um, and just a little bit of layering back here, and it's sewn. And then the back side has this pretty leaf and a little, little butterfly down here at the bottom. And I've just got that flipped over the edge with a baby paper clip. So I'll put that back on. There we go. This is a um, handmade paper and this is a vintage ledger sheet. It's um, stamped, I think it's 18 or 16 down here, but that's not 2016, that's 1916. So it's from the early 1900s. Another paperscapes book, a doily, more tea dyed paper. Lined paper from an old book. This page is a true, um, the actual, the real McCoy from sort of a, it was kind of a sketch book that I found at an estate sale. And I cannot read all of it <laughs> because it's in a script that we no longer use today. So that makes it extremely hard to read. And it's from 1900. And I can tell you, it says to my beloved wife, um, uh, as the writing, so the man, let them find the soul who can. If they do not, not, I, um, I don't know, something dear, what is the use of signing here? And he signs it, it's January 1st, 1900. So I'm really not sure. <laughs> really not sure I'm reading that correctly, but, um, but it's beautiful and it's um, been lined here on the back side with some washi tape and some trim from the snippet shop. More tea dyed paper, the back of the doily. Here's the back of that um, ledger paper and the back of the handmade paper. This is just a little layering I've done here on that page. And this print is from, it's also from Poppiness, from her shop. Tea dyed paper, made even Mirage, third signature. This has a little heart charm down here at the bottom. And some lined pages with some tea dyed paper. There's a print from a butterfly book that I've lined the edge with some vintage linen there, just to give it some extra stability. Another page from Edith Holden. And the rest is kind of just repeats. This is a pocket that I created from a player piano roll. Um, so I've got two pieces put together to give it the stability and then it's folded up to create a pocket. 
And inside here, I've just got a little postcard and a tag. This has um, a vintage little doily piece and a button and some lace here and some sewing. And then it's just backed with tea dyed paper. And then this is just a little card from Tim Holtz tucked in there. On this encyclopedia page, I just have um, some cardstock added to the edge there. Gives it some, some stability. Here's another ruffle. And here's the back side of that, uh, the, the second encyclopedia page where I did the same thing here, where I've um, embossed, heat embossed a, a pattern. I can't, I can't talk today. Oh, here's the other side of the player piano roll paper with a couple tags stuck in. This one also from Tracy Fox. Beautiful flowers. And just a little butterfly tag. And this is a pocket that was created from a book page. Um, the Prince was the book. And there's some washi and some layering here. A little bit of lace, some sewing, some more lace. Um, that I believe is a piece of, of uh, tea bag, a, a dried out tea bag, and a tea card, a butterfly, and then just a little tag and a little card tucked in there. More Edith. And on this side, I've created two pockets here from some cardstock. So you've got extra side pockets here and here. And this is a journaling card. Again, this is from that same, I, the graphics fairy. And then just a couple of tags tossed in here. And then here's another piece of that vintage lined paper. Back side of the butterfly, more tea dyed paper. And we're to the end. In the back pocket, again, I've already mentioned this was created from uh, that handkerchief, but I've got a big chipboard tag back here. I've, uh, the back side, I believe this is a printout from one of Tracy Fox's um, paper kits. It's got lines on it so you can write. And then the base started with a book page and then some, some um, stenciling with modeling paste and then some, uh, some wax, some, it's a green kind of metallic wax, splatters of gesso. And then this is a piece of cheesecloth, a metal butterfly, and then the butterfly has some of that green wax on it to give it just a tint of green. And that just pops right in there. Okay, and then that's the back. So there she is, and I wanna tell you, um, I will be listing this in my Etsy shop and I'll put in the description when I can get it listed when I'm planned to have it listed. And so she'll be there. We're gonna call her Rusty because this is sort of a rust color here on the spine. So we're just gonna call her Rusty. So Rusty will be listed soon. Um, now I wanna tell you, tell you what I did, <laughs> confession time. But it goes to, um, this morning I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw some comments about someone who was not happy with their work and so they were gonna trash it all. and. And it, it got me thinking about perfection and the fact that I really honestly believe perfection doesn't exist. There is not a project that I've worked on that I couldn't sit down with you and show you every single flaw in that project. But that's part of the beauty of it is that it's not perfect. Um, and so in this particular one, though there are many other things inside, <laughs> on the outside, the reason I've used a button here is because I had to cover up a mistake. So the very last thing I do is add the corners and the knob, you know, and the plate and any decoration on the outside. So the book is done by the time I'm doing that. And as I was creating and popping the hole on here for the knob, I realized that I had ripped this inside, this cover sheet. And not only had I ripped it, but then the knob that I was going to use was a Tim Holtz knob. Because this is upholstery fabric and very thick, the stem wasn't long enough to go all the way through. So here I am with a hole in the front and a little rip right here on the edge of the paper. 
and I had to get creative about what to do. I mean, the, res the alternative was to just trash the whole thing or start all over and un you know, take all the sewing out and I didn't want to do that. It was, again, I was done with the book. So I had some suede sitting here left over from trim off, you know, the, the extras left over from, from putting on the inside. And I thought, well, let's play with that because that'll create a nice protection. And that's when I found this button, fell in love with it. And actually, so my mistake ended up being something that I really like. So the point of that is, the point of me confessing is that you know that, that this isn't perfect, but you also know that there are ways to, to get to a point where you're still happy with your work. And so to all of you who are out there struggling with perfection, set it aside, move on, it's okay, nothing is perfect. So I just wanted to, to confess, <laughs> but it turned out great and I'm happy with the result. And that's really all that matters. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you are new to, or if you just stumbled across this video somehow and haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would subscribe. I'm so close to a thousand subscribers, so I'm trying to get there, um, hit that milestone. So please subscribe and um, until next time. Thanks. Bye.